Hey guys, this next video is going to be a bunch of ball python I can't eat for 2019. This is our first video. We're now being sponsored by Rodent Pro, so we're going to have a $50 gift certificate by Rodent Pro for the wittiest comment you can come up in all our comments on this YouTube video. Also, don't forget to follow us on New England Reptile on Facebook, New England Reptile on Instagram, Evil Morph God on Instagram, and also check out our store, NewEnglandReptileStore.com. But I love your feedback. Uh, I want to say thank you very much for everybody for the, like the last uh, several videos. We've gotten great feedback, and for those that keep giving us thumbs down, I love you too. Everyone, we're going to be going to Tinley Park in Chicago this October. So it's the middle of October. We're going to be there front and center. We're going to be bringing some of our best trick animals to show off. I'm really excited to go into Brian's show and uh, Bob Ashley's show, and I'm, of course, I'm also going to be doing. I'm going to be doing what? I'm going to be doing uh, the auctions. I do it with Brian and uh, it's really good for obnoxious time. I haven't done it for several years. I haven't even been to Tenley. So make sure you go there and, and also check out our merch below. We're really starting to drive our merch. We're going to start bringing more nerd merch and just keep watching because we're going to have some pretty cool stuff. This is a yellow belly bred with a gravel so it makes the highway. Then we add lemon pastel. These are from my angel dust uh, production animals, but I was never able to replicate the angel dust. But I do think these are quite pretty looking pastel highways, but they're just so dramatic. So this is a great example of epistasis. So an epistatic relationship is between a gravel and a yellow belly, which makes the highway. And then we add this pastel. So now we start getting this white based animal with this fantastic dorsal stripe and with the highlighter all around it and the coloration is just is magnificent so these are definitely a uh, fantastic it, it's almost hard to believe that these things are real but they indeed are and uh, i'm very happy with snakes that look like that now we're going to look at these guys are super enchies with hidden gene woma from the odium so we have uh, just some variations these are actually both clutch mates and so if I look at this animal right here and the head stamp without a hidden gene woma, and this has the hidden gene woma, there's more fuzziness with this hidden gene woma. But what is quite remarkable about this is we're getting this uh, tiger-like uh, patterning. There's a little goofy, little cute face. I've gotten so bored, guys, I have to look for faces. <laughs> but, uh, and then if I look at this animal, we have a cleaner animal with uh, these nice, Tiger stripes, we don't have a lot of the noise, so all this little stippling that you're going to see on here, we don't actually have it here. So we're kind of, I'm getting in uh, the area where I want to be here as far as I want to create an animal with a very contrasty pattern, minimalization of the pattern, but not a lot of stipu you know, uh, stippling to make the noise. But these two animals by themselves are quite fantastic and they're a great uh, set of genes that I can work with to uh, expand into other things. So you may also have, there's all sorts of uh, other genes in here that are associated with a lot of these clutches, uh, such as we'll do bald and fader. Fader is throughout a lot of this. The one thing I can tell you, when you do get animals from us and you're buying even simple combinations, sometimes even a bumblebee, a lot of times you're gonna get animals with genes beyond what we're telling you. So if I tell you it's a bumblebee and it's a pastel spider, well, in some cases they're their offspring of uh, parents that have greater genetics, but it starts getting very difficult to uh, authenticate all the different things. So we just basically might sell it as a bumblebee, but generally with nerd snakes, you're getting a lot more than just uh, those few morphs that you're, you're paying for. All right, this is a coral glow genetic stripe. So we have the recessive genetic stripe with the essentially the incomplete dominant coral glow, and then we, we add fader, but it, what it makes at the very least, just being uh, three genes in this animal, it makes for a fantastic looking animal. That doesn't even look real. The coloration is just magnificent. And you get a lot of contrast in this. So that's a beautiful animal. You can start adding. Actually, we'll show another one of those. And then I'll show you when you add a bit more. We started adding pastel and butter. So these are really fantastic because I really am enjoying the contrast. But as I start adding, butter we start creating these animals where the 
the pattern gets blown out. So we start getting this like orange patternless animal and they are fantastic as they are. Uh, if I could basically, I think visually I like a little bit simpler. Uh, genetically I'm gonna like these guys more because I can do more with these ultimately. So it depends if I'm just looking for uh, the phenotype just to look at the animal or if I'm interested in the genotype if I'm trying to breed. Genotype means that all the genetics associated with the phenotype is the visualization of those genes together, the culmination of those. But uh, these are really fantastic animals and all these animals have coral glow. So you get this ridiculous orange. All right, now we're looking at the hidden gene woma complex. So this is gonna be a super pastel, hidden gene woma, yellow belly, lots of fader in here, which is essentially an inferno. And with the super pastel, this is a super inferno Enchi Lucifer fader. So this is a beautiful animal. I've boat anchored it with a nice little meal in there. So sometimes after I feed these guys is some of the, the best times to actually do any kind of pictures and uh, photography because it kind of slows the animal down because these animals like to, you know, race around. Here's something very different. So if you start looking at something like this, now we're gonna start looking at a hidden gene woman, actually no, hidden gene woman line. This would be a Mojave Lesser. So we're gonna get the Leucista complex and then we're gonna lay over it uh, potential other genes. Uh, in this case, it would be GHI. Uh, if I had black light, I might notice if it has pinstriping and yellow belly. But at the very least, you make this very interesting animal. All right, contrast. So now, with an animal like that, that is going to be, once again, coral glow, black pastel, yellow belly, fader, and I think what's giving it an extra orange highlight is going to be Enchi. Uh, it does come from lineage where it would have Enchi. Uh, and that animal is quite fantastic looking. It's quite orange. But at the very least, this is a coral glow, black pastel, yellow belly, fader. Quite nice. So Enchi helps reduce the expression of this pied. And so we have, we have quite a few things going on here. We have, uh, so that's a single, that's a pastel or super pastel, enchi, hidden gene woma, pied. And uh, if I just made a mistake and I just said enchi reduces coral glow expression, I meant to say enchi reduces piebald expression. So if I double up the, the enchi on this, I can reduce the amount, generally, the amount of pied being exhibited, so the amount of white. So if I make animals such as a uh, bumblebee, Piebalds, a lot of times they'll have like the, the head of a bumblebee, but the rest of the body will be white. And after you've made a handful of those animals, you're like almost over it. You're like, okay, that, that's nice, unless your objective is to sell. A lot of times my objective is to satisfy my own uh, interests and curiosities, you know, keeping all these different genes and working with them together. You really want to see how these genes are reacting and how you can uh, work through what you're trying to express. Because generally all of us breeders, we visualize what we want and we're always thinking about, wouldn't it be cool if we made this snake and if we made that snake? So we have to learn how these genes work. This is a long, you know, it's a long road. It takes quite a bit of time for us to understand how these genes are expressing themselves. All right, one of my objectives is to basically, I really want to reduce pattern of these animals. I want to get down to a clean body base. So whatever the body base is, here I'm using the Malum gene uh, along with Spider, Super Enchi, Pinstripe to uh, basically nick back the expression of pattern. So we get this animal with a minimalization of pattern. I would like this animal to be as clean as possible. So what pattern I am exhibiting, I like to have that with not a lot of noise. And this is pretty good. Uh, I don't really have much for pastel going on in here, so the pastel would make it zing more. There's other different genes you could certainly add. You could even add bald and specter, which will help clean it up. Certainly um, orange dream too. And actually this animal, it's a tough one to tell if this one's exhibiting orange dream or not. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm looking at the head. 
a little bit of noise. Uh, this comes from Orange Dream lineage. I just, it's, it's a tough one to tell if we're expressing Orange Dream in this one. So here, this is, this is a tremor. So this has the Malum, Pinstripe, Lesser, Enchi with Orange Dream. So this really makes a very clean animal. It's almost an earthquake. Earthquake, you double up the uh, Enchi gene, but really nice. Look at those clean, clean sides. So this animal is gonna be uh, quite pretty when it gets a little bit older. All this stuff carries, uh, they're all possible het piebald too. And uh, what you always wanna consider when you're thinking about all your ball python combinations, sometimes even an animal can carry a, a het gene like clown. And even that little gene can help refine things and make things prettier. And within, you know, obviously all my breeding animals, I have all this, these weird genes like bald and, uh, you know, odium, but bald and fader. Fader is really strong here. We have fader through a lot of our animals with the uh, pastels. And then as we start combining a lot of different genes, it really starts exhibiting itself to a really a great degree. And the effect is usually quite nice. But for an animal like this, I'm looking for really clean, as possible. I like these little islands and here's something a little different. So in something like this you're gonna take a super pastel, pinstripe, super enchi, lucifer type animal and there might be a few other things going on. Let's see pastel, enchi, lucifer, pink and possibly yellow belly. So what we do we generally record what the known genes are from our parents and then we're putting that on the, the baby label and you kind of come up with a guess of what you think it is and as time goes on you may refine that and as the animal sheds several times and you start making more animals out of similar pairings or the same pairings you can then qualify what genes are actually being expressed and what are not but like I said whenever you get animals from us they're often going to have more genes than we're actually telling you so it's it's great and it's actually exciting too because you get some of my animals and you breed them with your animals and you could have all your little dinker genes and everybody else's interesting genes and you combine them together and you can make something that's very, very unique and only exists within your house or your business. Here's just a, a very pretty snake. So something like this, this is kind of odd and uh, this is has quite likely the Odium gene in it. So we're looking at um, probably Orange Dream, Odium, Hidden Gene, Woma, Enchi, not super Enchi, but this this has a very unique look to it. Its coloration is like a, almost like this butterscotchy yellow, and the saturation is quite nice. So this animal, I could do a lot with. If I had this as, let's say, a breeder, male or a female, I can use this to combine with other genes, and I can really ramp it up. So if I look, let's change that up. Now I'm look at a spider. So spider with orange dream really is great. Uh, when we add Lucifer, spider, orange dream, yellow belly, and Enchi, all that stuff is quite nice. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to beat spiders for this pattern reduction. We can see the orange dream, how it cleans things up with the Enchi and all that. And then we get the yellow belly on the sides. But these animals are just on fire. You get really great contrast, minimalization of pattern, and they're just uh, very, very pretty. But definitely uh, exciting, and there's a lot of cool things I can do with a base combo like that, and that's a very powerful animal. All right, so something nice here. Now we start doing Super Enchi with Coral Glow, and we have a lot of fader in this. There's a lot of expression of fader going on in this and it gives it almost these uh, watermarks and then this all comes from Odium lineage. I was sitting here looking at the label a minute ago just wondering why the watermarks on this were so significant and we'll show you some Odium stuff and what it does with the flames. Odium is fantastic for flames as well as really confusing me and kind of leaving me dumbfounded. So uh, I can never rely on exactly what I'm gonna get in a clutch with Odium because it's just how it expresses itself differently is, is pretty crazy. 
Uh, but these animals, after a couple sheds, are just gonna look great. These, like almost, like these faded blue uh, flames on this, as this animal grows, is gonna be great. You have more saturation in this animal, but you also have these little white blurs being, you know, fader, odium, if that's exactly, you know, what's exactly going on, I'm not gonna be able to tell you because there's a lot of stuff going on and I am at the point where I'm hatching stuff and I'm taking it all in. We have lots and lots of babies being produced and a lot of these animals are like the first time animals and you have to take it in and you have to kind of like reflect. I have Jeremy who, it's really funny because uh, Jeremy's been setting up clutches to the point where he's nearly going insane. And I'm laughing at him because I'm like, it's been my job to produce them. And he's like, what are you doing to me? I show clutches and clutches and clutches that he has to set up. And then he has to qualify them and uh, wonder exactly what they are. And, and then I come back and then I have to uh, correct some of the labeling. And I, I do it to myself. I'll write something and then you know, a month later I'm like, oh, that's, that's not quite right and I need to you know, add more things to it or whatever. But it's very important when you're looking at the, uh, the genetics associated with uh, both the sire and the dam of these animals. But we are really creating living art and it's just gotten to a point where it's unbelievable with so many different genes at play. We have animals that could, you know, have eight, 10 genes going at the same time.